So uh, we're going to be trying out the glass shatter asset here. And uh, this is how it looks when you bring it in. So let's just give it a go. Now this is not, um, this is not as complicated as some uh, shatter effects you might find where like, you know, you take a, uh, any kind of mesh and, you know, uh, generate a shatter across it. This, that's, that's complicated stuff. This is simple. This is just a square which has all the pieces already sort of pre-cracked in it. So, you know, it's, it, it's not crazy complicated, but it's, it's easy to use just for like scenes where you need to have um, just, you know, you need to have shattering glass. And, you know, if you happen to have a scene that has a square, uh, square piece of glass in it, then this, this will work okay, uh, presumably. So um, let's just run through how this works. And it looks like scale is being difficult. Okay, so you've got your translate rotated scale like this. You've got your square here, which moves it around and does all, all that, that good stuff. And um, that kind of positions your glass where you want it to be. And then you've got this guy here, which is your cannon. And as you can see, it's kind of this uh, round kind of shape with an arrow sticking out. And that just shows you where the force is going to be kind of localized. Uh, so let's just give it a go. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is check your frame frame rate. I'm going to set mine to 24 frames per second and go back down to uh, frame 1 to start with. And what you want to do is you want to set your start frame and end frame. A uh, key thing is, is that you want to make sure your end frame is after your start frame. If you don't do that, things aren't going to work uh, the way you want them to. So I'm going to say I want this, this jet here to turn on at frame 25 and turn off at frame 30. So let's do that and rewind. Oh, uh, make sure that you've got play every frame uh, turned on in your playback. Uh, this is a this is actually an end cloth, so uh, when you're working with dynamics, you want to make sure that that's turned on. But just make sure that that's turned on under your little settings time slider menu there, and close that off. And we're going to hit play and see what happens. So at frame 25, you can see that the glass just shoots out like that, and that's uh, all pretty good. Now the first thing you'll probably want to do is have it collide with something. So let's let's set that up real quickly. I'm going to create a quick uh, and dirty polyplane, which should uh, be somewhere. Here we go. Get that. And I'm going to bring that down. And just to give it something to collide with, I'm going to bring these points up a bit. There we go. And uh, if you hit play with this, the glass isn't going to react to it because you haven't told Maya that this is a collider object. So um, how do you do that? Well, like I said, it's, it's an end cloth. So what you want to do is you want to go up here to end cloth and you want to say, uh, do you want to say, anything? yeah, create passive collider. And that's kind of the same thing as a rigid body. So I'm just going to click on that once. And one thing I'm going to do is go down here and make sure that we're in the same solver. Uh, so how do, we, how do we see that in rigid shape? Ugh. Pull up the note editor here and see what's going on. Nucleus one. Okay, so nucleus one. Yes, that that is the same uh, nucleus that our uh, that our guy is in. Uh, you can have more than one nucleus. Nucleus is like the end cloth solver of the scene. You can have more than one. So uh, anything that's inside of this nucleus is going to um, react to everything else. So if you've got particles and collision objects inside one nucleus, anyways, don't worry about that. Uh, as long as your control and your new um, rigid shape is in the same nucleus, you'll be fine. Let's just say play again and see what happens. There it goes. And if everything works properly, these guys should bounce off the, the plane. Is it working? Is it working? Yes, looks like they're bouncing. So that's good. So that's pretty much all you need to know um, for this asset. There's, there's one more neat little thing, which I thought was kind of cool. You've got this, you see how it's kind of a lighter shade of blue around the edge here? Well, you've also got um, this attribute, which is called uh, frame hold. And if I dial that up and down, and you can only see this if you're in shaded mode, if I dial that up and down, you can sort of see what that's doing. But wherever this square is light blue, the pieces will not fall out. So you can do some neat effects here where like you blow a piece of the glass out and then you have other pieces kind of fall down one after the other. But let's kind of set that up now. So if I start here, rewind a bit, and this is starting on frame 25. So I'm going to go to frame 25. I'm going to key that there. 
And then I'm going to go forward a couple of frames. You can see right now, even though I'm just tapping through, it's only doing that. And I'm going to move it up a bit, right? I'm going to open up my graph editor here. I'm take a look at what I've done. And what I'm going to do is kind of like ease it out a bit. I work in the graph editor because I, when you're working with a dynamic asset, you don't want to be scrubbing back and forth a lot. It's, it's not... Uh, it's just a part of working with dynamic assets. It's a bit tricky working with dynamic assets, especially if you're uh, working like uh, in kind of animation land. But I'm gonna I'm gonna do my my animation in the graph editor. So I'm gonna go from here to here, and that's going to sort of expand the frame hold. And let's see what that that does. So blow it out there, and then you can see as the frame hold releases, uh, the pieces kind of fall away bit by bit. So you can get a little bit a little bit more of a a tiny bit more of a sophisticated effect than just the typical, you know, one blast and go. Again, it's a simple asset. It's not, it's not crazy complicated. It's, it's made to be simple. And if you want more glass, you know, if you're using this asset, if you want more glass, the solution is to bring in more pieces. You don't have any control over the shapes, which you, which you see is what you get. And, you know, I made it that way for a reason. I made it to be simple. So that's about, um, that's about all there is to it. Uh, just quickly, you've got this magnitude here. That's the force of the gun. The default is 1500. If I kick that up to something like 5000, you can see the difference that that makes. That'll really blow the pieces out. Blam, there we go. So it really shoots them out like that. Gravity, 100, you know, pretty self explanatory. Bounce, how much you want. These all affect the properties of the end cloth in there. And yeah, it is a cloth. It's not a rigid shape. It's just a cloth with very rigid properties. I find that using end cloth. Is better than using rigids in, in, in Maya. It just you know it's faster. It gives you better results. Friction, you know, you can probably imagine that's how much the pieces will stick to the collision objects, and that'll give it more bounce when they touch the ground. And then finally is seed. Um, I put seed in here just as like uh, if you bring in like five of these things and uh, shoot them all with the same settings, you want them all to be a bit different. You can just change the seed, and uh, the results will be uh, slightly different. You've also got use plane. If you don't want to have a, a collision object, if you just want it to, to bounce off of the ground plane, then you can just hit um, use plane, and that will activate the default uh, Maya ground plane. So I'll let this run for a bit, and they should be bouncing off of an imaginary floor, unless it wants me to rewind. Oh, oh they've already gone through the floor. That's a problem. Right, right. We're on. We're we're through the ground plane. So let's uh, let's actually rewind. Lift the whole thing up and hit play. And that should bounce off the ground plane. Yeah, so there we go. We're bouncing off the zero plane. And the last little thing to mention is that um, this thing supports four different frame rates, 24, 25, 30, and 60. If you're having trouble with it, if you're finding that you know, you're setting the start frame end frame and uh, nothing's happening, well, you know, it, it very well. So say, let, let's just do it. I just set it to 30 frames per second, but my rig is set to 24. If I rewind and hit play, when we get to 25, oh, nothing happened. Well, that's because our frame rate hasn't been set properly. So make sure that your frame rate is set to the same thing as your scene. I'll probably come up with support for more frame rates in the future, but for now, um, as a trade-off for how, you know, for simplicity of the rig, this is what we've got. Uh, so yeah, more updates coming in the future, but for now, that's pretty much how you use it, and uh, yeah, that's all there is to the glass asset.